So the bank took your money. They took the deposits, bought treasuries. Those treasuries are underwater due to the economic climate. They need cash to service the withdrawals. So the government, instead of selling more bonds and treasuries, okay, they're going to print money against the treasuries at 100% face value that are underwater. Crypto Slow, cryptocurrency news and investing. Crypto Slow with more crypto gains. What's going on, guys? Super duper huge video today. And as you know, I've stayed pretty consistent and adamant in that we were in a bear market and that I'm waiting for that island money, that generational opportunity to go all in back on crypto. Well, a lot of my hesitation has been because of the macros. You know, we have banks blowing up, war, this, that, and but as of the late, it seems like the worse the news is, the better Bitcoin does. But with that all being said, it's kind of the inverse trade. I'm going to tell you why today I think the bull run might have just started. It's looking that way. So looking at the chart, uh, we had this explosion over the 200-day um, moving average. And historically, you know, any time that it's clearly over the 200, it's you know, it's done well, or it's it's crabbed and then it went into a full bull market. So first and foremost, this is my opinion, you know, whether or not you deploy capital, that is up to you. But what I'm saying here is at this point, not to have exposure, uh, yeah, you know, it's, you could miss out on a lot. But let's talk about why I've suddenly flipped bullish. Now, keep in mind, that's not to say that I don't think that this, you know, this could top out. The next resistance point is around that 30K mark, and we could most definitely probably push up to that this weekend, possibly. Or we could have a pullback. So I'm not saying that it's at a good time to buy. I'm merely, I'm merely stating that the next point of resistance is that 30K level. So today I had the pleasure of reading Arthur Hayes' biggest take on the market, okay? And this is important. This guy is the GOAT. I'm not saying he's the all, tell all, be all, but his macro views definitely, this, I mean, I'm telling you, this is an article that will blow your mind. It's really long. But you can listen to it, which is kind of cool. It's a nice new thing that Medium has. But let's talk about it. In this article, Arthur specifically talks about the banking situation. So if you didn't know, what happened was the banks had their money tied up in treasuries. And then due to the inflation and interest rates, the bonds, the treasuries that they had their money in, basically it lost a lot of value quickly okay so that when people a bank run happened where people wanted to withdraw a bunch of money at once they didn't have access to the cash so what did the government do and that's what we're going to talk about so let's get into it so the nice thing about arthur is he has a way of of talking about stuff that makes it make a little more sense and I put together this chart to show you what the government has done in response to these banks failing. Okay, so let's go through it. Here you are, the citizen. You go to the bank, okay? You put your money in the bank. The bank puts their money in U.S. Treasuries. All of a sudden... You're like, man, the bank's paying me 0% interest. Why would I keep my money in a bank? I'm going to invest in U.S. Treasuries where I can get 3 to 5%. So everyone runs to the bank, and that's why it's called a run on the bank. 
And then the banks aren't able to fill that gap because they don't have access to liquid cash. And it's wrapped up in these treasuries. And the only way they can get the cash is to recognize a very large loss. So what did the government do instead? Instead of cashing out the bonds to service the deposit, they're going to allow the banks to use the existing treasuries as collateral for a high interest short term loan. So what does that mean? So the bank took your money. They took the deposits, bought treasuries. Those treasuries are underwater due to the economic climate. They need cash to service the withdrawals. So the government, instead of selling more bonds and treasuries, okay, they're going to print money against the treasuries at 100% face value that are underwater. So let's say there was a billion dollar in treasuries and maybe they're only worth 600 uh, 600 million, 800 million, if you liquidated them, they're going to allow them to use those as collateral at 100% of their face value to get a loan. So the bonds are used as collateral for the loan. So <laughs> this is this is the ultimate Ponzi. So instead of the government taking on the debt, the banks are taking on the debt. But then the, tre the tre U.S. Treasury is printing basically a derivative of the M2 money supply. So think of those treasuries when they sell those treasuries and they print money against them as an M2 supply. But then they're going to be using those as collateral even though they're underwater to print an M3 supply. So it's like taking your home equity loan and using the loan as collateral for another loan. The new M3 cash, instead of having to print new bonds, you simply print money against the collateral. Then the cash goes to the bank. The new cash can be used to service withdrawal requests or buy more bonds and repeat the Ponzi. So the new cash from the collateral goes back to the bank and then the bank can either service deposits or buy even more treasuries, use those as collateral, go back, get the cash, and now, what does this all mean? This means that, in essence, there's four. The banks hold 4.4 trillion dollars in treasuries. In essence, it's like injecting a quantitative easing of 4.4 trillion dollars into the market. So, this, in essence, it's a sneaky way of to to do quantitative easing, okay, with without defaulting on these bonds. Because they said if the banks cash those bonds, treasuries in now, there would be about an 800 billion to a trillion dollar deficit. So instead they're letting them use the bonds at 100% base value, collateral, get the cash, redeposit, and then they can service the yield. Now, here's the conundrum. That means that the banks will basically have an unlimited supply of money okay but to keep the ponzi going they have to make that money attractive because people you know who's gonna who's gonna borrow a seven percent mortgage nobody wants that so in essence this is going to force the banks to lower the interest rates and the fed is going to have to lower the interest rates to keep this going and after they do that this kicks off the next super cycle. Now, this whole thing is a mess. Don't get me wrong, okay? But, you know, it's like the ultimate Ponzi because, you know, you got your money, then you got your M2, and now you got your M3, and then you have the, uh, it's just absolutely ridiculous. But the only way this is healthy for the economy is those interest rates have to come down. Otherwise, the bank, even though Sullivan, is just sitting on a bunch of cash. Now, here's another downside. Those, those banks are taking out these loans at a very high interest rate. So I would expect, and that is based on Arthur's article, that the banks will underperform. You know, So they're going to have plenty of cash on hand, but on the books, it's kind of a bad investment. So this whole thing 
like I said, it's a mess. But if the interest rates, as they say, BTFP, by the effing pivot, uh, the Fed is going to have to pivot. Now, as far as this whole next, you know, the next print, uh, do I expect him to raise interest rates again? You know, typically they don't just stop. So at a minimum, I would probably expect to still see a 0 0.25, 0 to 0 0.25. Okay. I don't think we'll see a half percent because that is just going to exasperate this whole this whole bank bailout thing because this is going to hit the smaller banks okay so i would still expect a 0.25 so it's kind of like it's going up and then it slows down and then you know they'll start to reverse they'll have to reverse because if all the banks can have access to use those treasuries as collateral i would think banks would get greedy and try to cash that chip in if they could but i think a lot of people don't understand what they're talking about when the treasury when the yield curve inverts that basically means that the short-term treasuries bonds are paying higher than the long-term bonds so what happens is long-term bonds get devalued but the banks may be bag holding a bunch of those long-term bonds that's thus the shortfall in this whole cycle and then the users you know the citizens can you can invest in those treasuries too so why keep your money in a bank especially if if the treasuries are guaranteed so at the end of the day what this tells you is that the government will do everything and anything in its power to not default they're just going to keep coming up with reasons to infinitely print money i mean that's just the reality and you know this new whole schematic of what they've got going on it's going to translate into a massive liquidity injection so what you can think of is up to four trillion dollars could be injected into the economy now what the banks do with the money that's on them but with that being said I would expect this means that that risk on assets it's it's game on and we're gonna see Bitcoin continue to run now could there be a triple top or could we top out up here in the 40s I'm not saying it couldn't you could see a massive reversal but at least in the short term I think we're in for this melt up bull cycle and the government just clinched it with this new banking policy. So, hope you liked today's video. If you have any questions, post them below. I'll leave a link to Arthur's article. It really is worth a read to see the bigger macro picture. As always, like, subscribe. This is Crypto Slow. If you're not talking gains, then we're not talking.